This box right here is jam packed with a bunch of baits that have not been released yet. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you one of those baits and this bait actually just won a big money tournament up in the Bemidji area. And the winners of the tournament were actually third generation Petersons, the cousins, Charlie and Jace. And they won the tournament on this little guy right here, actually in this exact color. And this is the new weedless stand-up fireball jig. And we'll show you a little bit more on that bait later in this video. But for now, we're gonna hop in the boat with Charlie and Jace and we're gonna talk a little bit about how they won this tournament. So we're back out on Lake Bemidji. Charlie and I uh, were victorious over the weekend uh, at the Knights of Columbus Walleye Tournament. And we just wanted to showcase this new uh, weedless stand-up fireball jig. It helped us catch quite a few fish actually on Saturday. And uh, kind of back in the same area where we did most of our damage. Uh, the wind is fairly similar. What we like to usually do is fish actually into the wind and we like to keep our rod tips straight towards the towards the wind so we don't have a bow in our line. Um, right now we're just fishing anywhere from six to ten feet just using a spot tail shiner. There's the weedless fireball there. Um, and a little bit of cabbage. That's all we're fishing uh, anywhere like I said six to ten feet. And the fish are living right, right in the the thickest cabbage, that's where the big ones are. Next up, Charlie's gonna share a few more details on this jig, including how he works the bait to catch fish in the weeds this time of year. We see a lot of people uh, you know, try to stay away from stay away from the weeds, and Jason and I, we like to get up in the heaviest vegetation. So this is our favorite way to present live bait, is a stand-up fireball. It just seems to go through the cabbage better than other jigs. And now we got that weed guard in there so we can uh, penetrate even heavier vegetation. And uh, it's a stand-up fireball, which a lot of people might not think to use. And they think you just wanna, you know, put it on the bottom and stand it up. But we like to just cast it out there, let it fall to the bottom, and then kind of just reel in your slack and then just hold your rod tip up and just let it just pull through and drift drift back to the boat real slow. And then every once in a while, you'll give it a little bit of snap just to like, just to get uh, that feel of the jig and make sure there's nothing on it and just pull through the cabbage. And a lot of times those, those walleyes will just either, you'll just pick up the slack and it'll be, be on there or they'll just smack it. This bait comes in two different sizes, the eighth ounce and the bigger quarter ounce. And now Jace is gonna share a little bit about when he likes to use either size. Charlie and I like to use the eighth ounce primarily uh, when we're fishing anywhere from four, six to 10 to 12 feet of water. Um, it covers a broad range, but you know, that's where the, the cabbage likes to grow. Uh, that's where the, you know, the most weeds grow. But then we also will use the quarter ounce in the deep coontail. Uh, anything that grows out to you know 22 feet, that's a great jig for that. Northland's gonna offer this jig in eight different colors. Uh, my favorite personally is Glow Watermelon. Uh, another good one for you know dirty water would be like Sunrise. Uh, that's a killer for you know Lake of the Woods or Red Lake. Now Jace is gonna share a little bit of information on sort of like the ideal shiner size and how he likes to rig it on this particular jig. Uh, in the springtime and early summer, a shiner is really hard to beat if you can find them, obviously. Um, this is what I'd consider a perfect shiner size. I don't like them too small, and I also don't like the big, you know, pregnant females. Um, anything that's sleek. The biggest thing to do with your minnows, whether it be, you know, a fathead, a sucker minnow, um, a small red tail, is you wanna make sure you rig it, you know, perfectly straight. That's gonna keep that streamline when it's going through the weeds, whether you're you know, pitching it, casting it, or drifting. This would also be a great jig um, if you have a nice wind and you wanna drift through a cabbage bed nice and slow. That's gonna keep you know, perfectly streamlined just like that. Now as most of you know, a good bite does not stay good for very long. And we were actually out here just a couple days after they won that tournament and the bite was not all that easy, but we were able to put a few fish on camera for you.
Go Chuck. There's a walleye. Not not a very big one, but was that one of the tournament winners from this weekend? <laughs> this one I don't think would have got you a check, but might be a good one for the frying pan. Right in the weeds. Right in the cabbage weeds. Up in about seven, eight feet. Now this was actually my first time fishing in open water with both Charlie and Jace together. And one thing that I immediately noticed is that those two up on the bow of the boat are a well-oiled machine. Obviously, they fish together a bunch. They do a bunch of tournaments, whether it's walleye tournaments, bass tournaments. And I thought it would be interesting for them to talk a little bit about their system, kind of how they play off each other, how they look at their electronics and utilize them to catch more fish and be more efficient. So they're gonna jump right into that, is what they're gonna do. So most of the time, Charlie and I actually fish together just like this. Uh, both of us stand right in front of the boat. Uh, we have our Helix 12 and a Garmin set up and we fish a lot by, you know, finding weeds with our, actually I have a fish on. breaking the action. Not target species though. Not target species, but when you're fishing in the weeds, you're gonna catch some pike. I don't get the net for <laughs> pike. <laughs> Sorry, Jace. So even with uh, pike, your weed guard isn't gonna show any memory. It snaps right back into place, which is really sweet about these jigs. We like to use our side scan to see, it, just in case you know if we miss any fish off to the side. That's located in the back corner of the boat. Um, so we're always watching this and we can also see if we missed any you know, points or reeds or holes in the weeds. But then with the live scope, um, I'm constantly you know, panning the Altrex, uh, the transducers on the Altrex, and just checking you know, if there's fish or if there's weeds. We're not always fishing fish, um, but if we see a nice patch of weeds, we'll cast it out real thoroughly. Um, and more times than not, there's fish in there. Go ahead. So there is a lot of times where we're actually not casting at all. Um, if we're fishing, you know, sand or gravel, those fish really stick out. Um, they can hide a little bit better in the weeds, but even in the weeds, we, st we still see them. Um, there's times where, you know, if you're searching for one big fish, you can skip the small uh, marks and, you know, just target big fish. While we're on the topic of electronics, here's a few bonus live scoping tips that will help you catch more walleyes if you happen to have that on your boat. So a lot of people with live scope nowadays and you know live imaging and as a whole, they'll cast and they want to see their jig all the time. They want to see that fish, you know, eat their jig, kind of like you know ice fishing. Um, we personally actually don't care if we see them eat on the screen. We'll see those fish and we'll spot lock or you know keep track on where those fish are and then actively pitch to them or cast to them. So there's a couple fish right there, right at 15 feet or so. Uh, they're real close to the boat, but that's what we look for when we're, you know, targeting these weedy spots. There's also another one in the weeds right here. We're sitting right on the edge of the, the cabbage. So another thing that live scope really helps with us is we're trying to save on bait and present like the most live bait that we can. So when we're driving around looking for fish, we're not casting our bait around and putting stress on that minnow. So we're looking to cast on high percentage spots and, t and getting the most out of our, our live bait. Nice one, Charlie. That's what we're looking for. Choke that. Choke the weedless stand up fireball. Probably like a 16 and a half incher. Now obviously this new jig was designed specifically to thrive in weed fishing situations. And uh, Jace is just gonna give you a quick look at the type of weeds that they're catching these walleyes in. This is, this is actually what we're fishing right now. Uh, you know, this is cabbage that has grown from this year. Um, nice green cabbage stalks. This is already in 10 feet of water and it's, you know, not even the middle of June. Um, but that's what the walleyes, you know, and the pike are living in, and the perch, everything lives in this, you know, year round and that weedless, that weedless stand-up fireball goes through there, just perfect. Now if you've watched this far into the video, 
and you're potentially interested in this particular jig, Charlie's gonna share a little bit more information about some of the components that make up this particular bait. So a couple aspects of the weedless stand-up fireball jig that make it stand out from others is this short shank wide gap hook. It's not really a light wire hook, it's pretty, it's pretty hefty. So you can pitch it in the heavy cover and get a good hook set on fish and pull it out, pull out big fish out of the weeds. And uh, this is how I rig up a shiner. Just, you kind of have to get it through the weed guard like that and get it over the hard part of the head. And then just like that. So the weed, this fireball jig has two strong but flexible titanium weed guards there. And it makes it perfect for fish and heavy cover that me and Jace really like to get ourselves into. This bait is actually a 2023 new release, but if you're looking to get your hands on it, you can actually run over to the NorthlandTackle.com website right now. They actually have some in stock if you're interested in grabbing some of these for your weed walleyes. But if you enjoyed this video and you learned something, make sure to hit that little red subscribe button down below because we have more content to come. We might even talk about some new baits coming up here in the not too distant future. So anyway, thank you for watching and we will see you in the next one. Well, yes sir. Catch all sizes, right? I guess so. All shapes and sizes? All shapes and sizes. I mean, that's a sandwich. That's nothing to scoff at. Or taco. I like a taco. That's a taco. But today, he gets a free pass. Free pass for that angry little dude.